I took from this. So guys, there might be some stuff in here that seems like it's for kids because it is, it's for my son. Okay. Amen. So it's I'm being joked. So I feel like when um the, the, like the devil's job with the, the devil felt like oh you guys can sit down. <laughs> no, we're not doing this whole thing standing. <laughs> I feel like the devil felt his job was too easy. So, um, in, in this, in, in the, the title of the service to write down is "I'm being joked." Okay. So, <laughs> uh, I'm sure we've all felt that way. We're just like we're doing good, and just stuff keeps happening to us. We're like, "Why, God, why?" Um, so we'll get back to that in a little bit. But um, the the devil felt like his job was too good. I feel that. that that's why this whole thing transpired is um, an angel shows up um, with the devil and God says to the devil, where have you been? And the devil's like, oh, I'm just walking around to and fro. You know me, I get around. <laughs> um, and, and, God, and, and the devil's like, you got any work for me? Because this is too easy, right? I'm just, just living the dream right here. I don't know why am I even here, right? And God's like, I, I got one for you. My, my humble servant, Job. My humble servant, Job. Right? So Job was a man that had, he had, he had an unlock. He had many things. He had, uh, just to go over his assets, he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke, and 500 female donkeys. Right? You got 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of That's a lot of sheep. 3,000 camels, those are, that's where ballers grow back in those days, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so God's like, okay, Satan, you can do whatever you want to Job, he just can't take his life. Now, Job was such a solid guy, he was holding it down on his own, he was a sinless man, uh, as sinless as he could be as a human. Uh, Job did, like, preventative maintenance, he says in Job 1.5, um, because Job's kids, they like to party, right? Job had, he had a lot of land, and his kids lived on his compound, and, and they would throw ragers, right? And every morning, his kids, every morning, Job would go out there and have a burnt offering, and says, Job 1 5, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So Job would, Job would go out there, and he would have this burnt offering, and then and, and, and give it to God in case. In case his kids sin, like preventative maintenance, right? Yeah. So, um, Job's first test. Job's first test. Uh, this guy comes up the hill, and uh, he's like, "Job, uh, I got bad news for you. Um, the uh, the Sabians, um, they have. Oh, the, the, here's a fun fact." The Sabians, they come from a place we call Yemen, right? So in this story, there's uh, there's two different tribes, and this is before Iran, Iraq, and Israel became a nation, so they had different titles at the time. I think I'm going to highlight, or I didn't highlight here, what they are, if I forget about it, uh, hit me up later um, in front of your RA so you don't get correction about it, okay? <laughs> so, uh, the Sabians attacked, and they carried off the oxen from the land, and they put their blades to the servants that worked there. The blades put in to the servants means that they killed all of the servants, minus the one person that delivered the message. So the guy comes up, like, hey, Joe, good morning, good morning, right? Proper greeting. This is boss. He has some respect him. He's like, yeah, over there, your whole, all your inventory is gone. Everybody's dead. I'm the only survivor. He was like, man, that's, that's tough, right? That's tough. So um, second, uh, let's see, Joe, another one of Joe's servants comes over, uh, Huffing and puffing, and he's like, Joe, uh, I have bad news for you. He was like, Well, what a, what a bad day so far. Uh, he's like, So, oh, oh just to make it where uh, I'm interpreting here, we're going to call these things instead of like the, the, the yak dealership or the sheep dealership, we're going to go with, uh, with car names, right? So, uh, so a, a second servant comes over and he goes, Hey, Joe, I got, I got bad news for you. He was like, oh, Crap. So he's like, The Sabians. Um, the Sabians came out, and uh, they uh, they took us all. No, Sabians already came. 
This one was a uh, fire. Okay, a fire came out. So a fire, a fire struck the Chevy and Ford dealership, and everything was completely destroyed. Right? <laughs> the Chevy and Ford dealership. His uh, his sheep and his uh, goats. Right? They're done. Done for. The sheep and goats are done for. It's Ash Wednesday over there. Everything is smoldering ashes. I'm the only survivor. Everyone's gone. That's it. It's over, Joe. I'm sorry. Hey. Oh, good morning, by the way. All right, boss. He's like, man, that's, that's rough. So while he's relaying this message to Joe, Joe, there's a third uh, servant who's just folded at his knees like this. His, gasping for air, and then Joe just sees, like, one guy came, two guy came, he sees the third guy, he's like, I don't know, this, this can't be the news, right? So the, the third guy comes up, and he's like, um, hey, Joe, I mean, Boston, uh, good morning. Um, hey, uh, this is, uh, I got bad news for you. The, uh, the, 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 the Mercedes dealership, your, uh, your camel, they're gone. The Chaldeans came. They put knives to all of our necks. Everybody's dead but me. So they're captured, right? And they took all of your, your camel, right? So Joe, he probably drove one of those camels and, and it sucks for him like he's a baller and now he doesn't have a car. So now he's got, his dealerships are gone. It's three lots, right? So Joe was like the monopoly guy of the car dealerships. He had Mercedes, Ford, Chevy, like he looked down on car row. He owns them all, right? He was no joke. And now his inventory is gone. Okay? So that's like that's like one bankrupt right there. So then there's a, there's a fourth guy folded, gasping for air. Joe's like, this isn't I don't know what that guy could even be here for. I don't have anything to have. Like, look at my property. It's all fire, dead people. I mean, this is this is really bad. I <laughs> what is, what's going on? So the fourth guy. The fourth guy comes up like, go, go. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, this one needs no interpretation. The fourth one comes up and he's like, yo, I have bad news. You're up. Uh, your, your kids, uh, wind swept up their house. They all, they're all dead. They're all dead, Joe. So with, with this one, I don't need an interpretation because we all know and understand what it's like to lose someone. This could be from addiction. This could be from a car accident. This can be from so many things. If I look around the room right now, I see that's not you guys. You would, but we've all lost someone, right? We're all on the floor. Someone has passed away. And, and it hurts. It sucks. It's the worst thing possible, especially when someone close to you. So Joe's, all of his inventory is gone, his kids are dead, and this is the first chapter of Joe. This is his first test. This is the first test that Joe had was losing all of his inventory and his kids are gone. There's a second test coming up. There's a second test, right? And the second one, the devil's like, wow, God, the Joe is a solid servant because in all of this, Joe did not sin, not once. He, instead of instead of sinning or being like, why God, why? He's like, God, what, what can I do? Help me, help you, help me. Right? Second test, the devil was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do in this situation. Uh, usually they fold by now, right? Usually they're cursing God's name. The day they were born, they're on my team. They're doing, they're sinning, and they're working for me now, not Job. So on this one, the devil has a, a a, a light bulb come up and he's going, he says, we're going to go flesh for flesh on this. We're going flesh for flesh. So what he does is he puts uh, boils all over Job's body. Okay? He puts boils all over Job's body. I mean, and Job starts looking like a Halloween costume. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I have nightmares. I have nightmares about like one of my teeth coming out. Right, or I'll wake up like in a panic, like, oh my god, my front teeth is there, cool. Right? Like I have nightmares about that. <laughs> I can only imagine my boils like the size of golf balls pop on a whole other place. And my wife has them too. It's awful. Yeah. Just looking at her and then look at myself. I don't think that mirrors. Just looking at her and then dang, I look like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so in all that joke stays faithful to the Lord. And Job says in uh Job 10, because his wife's like, 
I don't know how they spoke back then, but I'm gonna use like an old Jewish lady voice to say, how's your faith now in the Lord, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's how I read it when I read the Bible. Right? And Job says in 210, you are looking foolish, woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? All of this, and Job still did not sin in what he said, right? So, in Job, this is the third part, right? Good news is on his way. Job's homies came through. They showed up to cheer him up. Sight. <laughs> so you have uh, Eliphaz, the Terminite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and so far, the Nehemathite. I'm pretty sure I'm saying he's 100% correct. <laughs> All right? In front of you, all right. If you want to let me know what happened, and I said it wrong, go ahead. If you get correction, not my problem. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, we're, we're all used to our friends coming and lifting us up, right? I, I have, I realized today, well, I realized before that, that I have friends. My buddy showed up. They don't have to be here. None of these people that came to support me have to be here right now. I asked them to, and they said they'll be here. And here they are. So that's a beautiful thing. And you guys, you guys have to be here, but I feel like you're having a good time, right, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one clap from the later. One clap. Yeah, Drive proud of me, here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now Joe's, uh, Joe's, I keep calling him Joe. Joe, I don't know any Joe's. I don't know any Joe's. Joe's friends sit there for a whole day in silence. They sit there for a day in silence, just like, just trying to think of something to say, and then just waiting on it, right? A whole day passes by, and then the first one speaks up. I'm just like, all right, all right, Joe. You know what you did. You know what you did. There's no way that all this would keep happening if you weren't doing something shady. All your, your dealerships, the cheap, Lot, the Mercedes, all that, all that's gone right now. And your wife, ugh. like, <laughs> what did you, what did you do? I, all, all, by the way, like when I read this, I don't know what happened to his wife. Or I don't think she died. They just stopped talking about her. I already know. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, so Joe's friend, one by one, they start. Um, it's like if, you, if your friend has a fly in his face, right, you want to knock it off, right? One of those. They're hitting him with a hammer to get that fly off his head. <laughs> just one by one, just drilling him like, you know what you did, dude. Come on. We're all, we're all buddies here. Just tell us what happened. God will forgive you. You can repent. Joe's like, <laughs> you, need, you guys need to shut up. You need to get out of here, all right? If you can't see it in the eyes, don't see anything at all, all right? All right. <clears throat> So, in this un uncomfortable position, um, Job doesn't sin, right? He doesn't say he doesn't say anything against God. Even after his friends attack him, his wife is not on his team. No one's on his side. But when he comes to prayer and asks God, like, "What is this? What are you trying to teach me?" He stays faithful to the Lord. He does not abandon ship. Now, is it is this something that 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 like I read I read this story and now things are happening in my life? I can just go, oh, I'm being Job right now. That's what's going on. It's all good. I'm being Job. I'm being Job. No big deal. Let me just read it again. All right, there we go. I feel better now. Cool. All right. Cool. Oh, I got correction. Hmm. Let me go back to Job. We're all good. All right. Hey, thanks for the ticket. I don't need a phone call. <laughs> So after all this happens, right? Job steps out, steps outside. He steps outside. I don't know what his friends took off, or they're just staying quiet, like he asked them to. Um, and he steps outside and steps and pervades his land. We got a place that was caught by fire. All his people got murdered up the street from there. And all his whole his whole inventory, his whole empire that he built as he stayed faithful to the Lord was destroyed. And and he goes out and talks to God, and God's like, start over. Keep going. 
right? Thank you so much for staying faithful, Joe. And, and, and Joe, like, all this happened and your friends came through um, and uh, they, they, think, they thought that you sinned. So what do you want to do to your friends? What do you want to do? What do you want me to do to them? You want me to get rid of them? Joe's like, no. No, I just want them to know that, that I'm faithful to the Lord and I'm forgiving. That's, that's where the story ends. That's, that's, that's how Job ends up. After all that happened, he's like, no, I'm still with you, God. I'm faithful. So, what, while, I'm, while I was reading this, uh, while I was reading this, and while I write all these things, like I write them, and, and while I'm like writing to my son, God is on, he's on me. I feel his presence on me. When, when, when I open up that word and, and I'm relaying this, this story and what it means to me, I have tears hit, the, hit these pages. Um, and, and it's a good feeling. They're good tears. Like, fall in love with the Lord. Let him capture your heart over and over and over again to where nothing else makes sense. You guys can get that where you're at. And once you graduate, that's when you start. That's where you start your walk. So, stay faithful, guys. Um, I also don't have to be up here. I, didn't, I, I put in for it because I got a message and I want to, I want to deliver it. These aren't, these aren't for me to be studious. This is me expressing my love for the Lord. So um, let's do, um, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for giving me the courage to come up here. Thank you for putting it in my heart to keep expressing your love to me and expressing my love for to your children through me, through my words, through my actions, Father God. Uh, although things may happen to us, we never abandon you because you've never, ever, ever left us, Father God. These are the perfect. This is the perfect time and place to get uncomfortable and draw nearer to your love, Father God. So we thank you for these trials. We thank you for the perver perseverance that comes. And, and, and the steps that we're in, Father God. So we, we need you in our daily lives. And it's such a crucial thing that you're upon us, Father God. And we appreciate you so, so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.